Okay, so we've seen reactions where we put a strong acid in water, and it's pretty straightforward what happens. The strong acids shatter. They release hydrogen. Every single one of them releases hydrogen. So if you have 37 hydrochloric acids, let's say, when those split up, you're going to get 37 hydrogens, or H3O would be more like it, and 37 chlorides. The numbers of acid that you used to have and hydrogen that you get now will be identical every single time. That's the definition of a strong acid. We say that they ionize, they 100% ionize or they ionize quantitatively, which means the entire quantity ionizes. And that makes some of our calculations very simple. If you have like 0.5 mole per liter hydrochloric acid and you can check on your acid base table, convince yourself this is one of the top six acids, then that means in addition to 0.5 mole per liter hydrochloric acid, our solution is going to end up being 0.5 mole per liter H3O. In other words, one second after you put this into water, all of this will be gone, and instead you'll have 0.5 mole per liter H3O, and incidentally 0.5 mole per liter chloride ion. So the HCl will all tr convert into H3O and chlorides. Now that means if we want the pH, it's right here for the taking, it's negative log 0.5, and if they want the hydroxide, well we just learned how to do that. We know that H3O times OH always gives the ion product for water, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. The H3O we just found is 0 0.5. Hydroxide is what we're working on finding. Equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And so if you do 10 to the minus 14 divided by 0.5, we get 2 times 10 to the minus 14 is our hydroxide concentration. 2 times 10 to the minus 14. Because the solution contains a strong acid, we're not surprised to see that the hydroxide is virtually extinct. Its concentration is extremely low. Nitric acid, same thing. This is a top six, and as soon as you put that in water, you're going to get H3O at a concentration of 2.5 moles per liter. However much HNO3 you used to have, now you have that much H3O and the hydroxide. I'm going to do this a little faster because I think you've already had some practice with this formula. The hydroxide concentration will be 10 to the minus 14 divided by 2.5, which I believe is, I'm going to take, take a chance that that's 4 times 10 to the minus 15. Hope my mental math is on today. That's moles per liter of hydroxide. Now they get a little less nice. They aren't giving us concentration anymore. They're saying 100 grams of HBr in 500 ml of solution. Well, we could get a concentration for that if only we had a number of moles and a volume. Uh, the volume is 0 0.5 liters, so that's okay. Number of moles, now yeah, we can get that. Number of moles is mass divided by molar mass for the HBr, so it's 100 grams divided by bromine 79.90, add a hydrogen onto that and you get 80.91 grams per mole. So 100 divided by 80.91 tells us we have 1.236 moles of HBr. That means up here we have 1.236 moles of HBr. HBr. And that makes our concentration, what is that, 2.472 moles per liter HBr. Now, HBr is hydrogen bromide until you get it wet, and then it turns into hydrobromic acid, which is one of the top sixes. So 
as before, if the concentration of uh, top 6 acid is this, that means our H3O concentration instantly becomes that same number. 2.472 moles per liter. Because every one of these breaks into a hydrogen, which gets picked up by water and becomes H3O, and bromide ions, which we kind of don't care about. They're an incredibly feeble base, probably aren't going to matter. So that's our H3O. Uh, they also wanted the hydroxide concentration. And you can get hydroxide because it's the ion product for water, divided by our H3O, 2.472. And that gives us what? divided by 2.472, I get 4.04. .04. Yeah, everything's three significant digits, so, oh, I'm sorry, 4.05 to so three significant digits times 10 to the minus 15. And that's moles per liter of hydroxide. All of these were top six acids, so all of them have vanishingly small hydroxide concentrations. Makes sense. Okay, what else they got? Hydrogen iodide this time. So again, we would like a concentration, but to find concentration we need a number of moles and they didn't give us that, so we must find that first. Number of moles is mass divided by molar mass. Mass is 350 grams. Iodine is uh, 126.90 at a hydrogen 127.91. grams per mole, of course. 350 divided by 127.91. 2.736 according to my trusty calculator, moles of HI. So that means our concentration up here is 2.736 of HI divided by, they said 2,000 milliliters, which means 2 liters. So that's uh, 1.35, 1.3, 1.368, 1.368, 1 moles per liter HI. HI is hydrogen iodide. Until you put it in water, then it's hydroiodic acid, which is, yes, a top six acid. It'll produce H3O in an amount equal to its own. So 1.368 moles per liter is our hydrogen concentration, because all top six acid re acids release hydrogen. This is like saying I have 1,368 people, therefore I have 1,368 noses or heads or something. It's guaranteed to be a one-to-one -one ratio. It's never anything except that. So whatever this number is, you could just copy it over and say, I have this many HIs, I'll get this many hydrogens. And if they want the hydroxide, I'll shortcut this because you've seen it a few times. Ten to the minus fourteen. One times ten to the minus fourteen divided by one point three six eight. One times ten to the minus fourteen divided by one point three six eight. Seven point three one times ten to the minus fifteen. Moles per liter, I should say. And moles per liter OH would be even better. Okay, three moles of HClO4. Nice, we don't have to do the uh, molar mass thing. This is uh, hydrogen perchlorate or perchloric acid once we get it wet. Its concentration will be a uh, number of moles divided by volume, so three moles divided by 0.5 liters is 6 moles per liter. It's pretty thick. That's HClO4. So if your strong acid is 6 moles per liter, your hydrogen is also 6 moles per liter. Those numbers just match, no math required. 
And if we want OH, you know the drill, ion product for water divided by the concentration you have equals the other one. This is going to be uh, 1.67 times 10 to the minus 15 moles per liter hydroxide. 100 milliliters of 0.5 mole per liter solution of HBr. <laughs> okay, dilution now. You remember how dilutions go? When you dilute a solution, the number of moles of chemical stays put. You aren't adding or subtracting any chemical, but you're increasing the volume it's dissolved in. And that's why the concentration comes down. So if we start with 100 mL of 0.5 mole per liter HBr, the thing that will not change about that is that the number of moles in it, n equals CV, is 0 0.5 times 0 0.1 liters equals 0 0.05 moles of HBr. That amount is not going to go up or down. We're keeping all of that, we're just adding more water to it. It used to be in 100 mils of water, now it's going to be in 500 mils of water and so the concentration is going to change. Our new concentration is 0 0.05 moles of HBr. But now, instead of being in 100 mil, it's now in 500 mils, or 0 0.5 liters. And that makes our new concentration 0 0.1 moles per liter. Okay. If you're really quick at these, the, the speedball way to do this is to say, well, they've made the volume five times greater, therefore the concentration must get five times less. Take this concentration, divide it by five, and that's the new concentration. If they give you nice numbers, that works, but they won't always give you nice numbers, so it's good to be able to do it this way. You find your number of moles divided by the new concentration, or sorry, the new volume, <laughs> and that gets you the new concentration here, the watered down concentration. Now that we have that, it's a top six acid at 0.1 moles per liter. That means our H3O will be 0 0.1 moles per liter. And hydroxide is the ion product for water divided by 0 0.1. It'll be 1 times 10 to the minus 13 moles per liter. And finally, okay, another top six acid. Their, their phrasing is a little different here, so stay with me for this one. There's a, tr there's a trap here that I wouldn't want you to get snared by later. For starters, we have 25 mils of 0.4 mole per liter nitric acid. So how many moles is that? N equals CV. Concentration is 0 0.4 volume is 0 0.025 liters. So that's uh, 0 0.01 moles of HNO3. Okay, now with this one they said we had 100 mils, and then we diluted to 500 mils, meaning this was the old volume, this was the new volume. That's not what happens this time. This one, we had 25 mils of nitric acid, then they add another 300 mils of water to it. The new volume is not 300, it's 325. So both of these are valid ways to say it. People do talk like this, and people do talk like this. You just have to pay attention to it and hope that they communicated clearly which version it is. Diluted to 500 mils means we made this the new volume. If they say we added 300 mil of water, then your new volume is take 25, add 300 onto it. So our new concentration, I'll put C new here, is the number of moles 
equals HNO3 divided by the volume is 325 mil or 0 0.325 liters. Can't do that in my head. 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.325. 0. Point, what are we doing for sig digs here? 25 mils only has two sig digs, so that's going to hold us back to 0. 0.031 moles per liter of HNO3. That's the concentration after we water it down. It went from 0.4 all the way down to 0. 0.031. Now, that's the concentration of a top six acid, so we know the H3O will be the same as that. 0 0.031 moles per liter. And the hydroxide concentration, which we're also supposed to get, is Kw, the ion product for water, divided by our H3O. This is the formula H3O times OH equals Kw. I've just manipulated it because Lately, we're always using it the same way. We're using it to find OH. Uh, this is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And H3O is 0 0.031. 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 0 0.031. And I get 3 point, to 2 sig digs, I guess it's just 3.2 times 10 to the minus 13. And that's moles per liter of hydroxide.